Here. 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 Here.
So estimated around maybe 85,000 we'll get, but it is applied directly to the PD budget. And I'm sure, you know, anybody who's been, we set the budget, what's needed. We plug in that sales tax or that public safety sales tax. Then we move money from the general fund over to fund it. So every bit of that money does go to the PD. But with rising costs now, by the time we buy a vehicle, have it wrapped, put radio, put cage, whatever we need, that takes just about every cent. So that's why I, I know if you listened in last week, we talked about uh, putting a use tax on the ballot. So if residents wish, they can approve a three cent use tax or a th yeah, a 3% use tax, which the intent for that is to go to public safety. You want to address the consultant guys? Yep, you have a draft in your packet today and working to see if I can get the consultant down here the first meeting in January so that he can go over it with you. Okay. Anything else, Mike? That's it, thank you. Anybody else like to speak at public forum? Last call for public forum. Very well then, we'll move along. Next is PNZ case 2306, lot split, exception review, Miller and Pinnell, northeast corner of Schubert Mitchell. This will be a public hearing, and anyone that would like to speak in favor of uh, this lot split exception, please come forward. <laughs> Thank you, Council. My name is Jacob Lett with Schubert Mitchell Homes. Uh, came here and wanted to explain how you guys got that folder of information on this lot split. Uh, first, I need to apologize. This information uh, we actually discovered today. We dug in a little bit more. Um, we did not have this when we went to PNZ last week. Um, had we? We brought it with us. Um, to be completely honest, last week we anticipated it getting passed and we didn't dig in a whole lot. Uh, today we dug in, uh, looked at the lots we own on Miller and Pinnell. Uh, if you've got that folder in front of you, I'd like to walk you through the documents we have in there. Uh, the first page should be uh, just this copy of the lot split application. Um, in there, I want to draw attention to uh, a dashed line on that bottom lot that shows the original lot split line. Um, this is the line that, if you go to Beacon today, shows a 55-foot parcel on the south side, followed by a 92-foot parcel on the north side. Uh, that's the line that shows on Beacon. Up until today, we thought that was a, a county error, or maybe just a, a line there from a previous sale or something. Uh, but what we ended up discovering was that was actually a lot of what that was done prior. Uh, the next documents that you have uh, should all be paper clipped together. It's a group of warranty deeds. Um, in there, uh, the first one you have is whenever we purchased the property in 2022 uh, from Steve Baird. Um, there, I want to point out it shows two tracks. Again, we, we assume that was just a county thing. Uh, but then, as we dug through the record of titles, that next document shows when uh, Mr. Steven purchased it. It was two lots uh, before that, uh, Ms. Juanita Fay Tucker. Uh, there's a beneficiary deed where she, uh, where she uh, put a, a transfer on death to it. And the final one is uh, whenever she purchased that property. Uh, the reason I give you that chain of, of warranty deeds is for this second to last document. Uh, it is a quick claim deed from September 1993, uh, where prior to the passing of the planning and zoning, uh, for Carl Junction, that quick claim was done to separate those two properties. Uh, again, we discovered this today. We had to dug through the history of it. Uh, so, actually, officially uh, talking with the city administrator, this property is two parcels already. Um, so, in looking at that, we're not actually asking for a lot split, as this is already two parcels. Um, what we wanted to discuss with you guys and, and uh, with the city attorney here. Um, whether we could proceed with this being a lot line adjustment to move this from being a 55 foot wide lot to 92 foot wide lot into just two 70 foot parcels. Uh, that last 
last document that is there it is the determination of Board of Adjustments case from 2019. This is actually the two lots directly north of the port parcel that we're talking about tonight. Um, and this was an approval for the same sort of situation for the lots directly north. It's an adjustment of that lot line um, to actually two 70 foot parcels, exactly what we're, we're asking for tonight. So I uh, wanted to provide you guys with this information. Again, I apologize. That's, that's all us for not digging this up. Uh, sooner um, and I want to present to you guys and get your thoughts of direction from here. My thought would be you got to go back to Board of Adjustments with this, right? Mr. Talley? <clears throat> I am not prepared. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm not prepared to respond on this. Um, the lot adjustment procedure you're talking about, is that, I'm not even sure where that is in our code um, without looking for it. Uh, Absolutely. Um, I, let, let alone tell you what you need to do. Um, if, if I understand correctly though, you are withdrawing your request for a Lot split. Yes, sir. At this point, we are not splitting any lots. And that is the purpose of the public That's hearing, fine. and um, that that we the board can react yeah. to. Um, but as far as the other part, I just am lost in trying to advise what the board what you need to do, um, if anything. Uh, did, do you have it, Billy? Oh, I just. So looking at this, it looks like in 2019, it went to the Board of Adjustments for you guys to build on what are now some standard lots, which that would go to, I mean, it says it was for yes. a variance pertaining to lot. So that would go to the Board of Adjustments. Adjustments. That's a completely separate right. process. process. Right. Which initially, I know we were submitting for that same request. So anything we need to do as far as where to go, we're absolutely and I, like I said, I apologize. This is this is on me for not looking this up sooner. It, it just it just hits me cold. I'm not, I'm not able to to uh, other than the fact that you're withdrawing the lot split request. So the board doesn't need to take further action tonight. That I, uh, He's looking for a direction. What he thinks he should do <laughs> in the future. Well, and and you know that'll take some time to decipher. With that being said, we'll, uh, I don't know if we need to present that, but we would like this last step request to be withdrawn and we'll present it with a, a better plan. Thank you. You can close. Yeah, I'll, I'll close the public hearing since the uh, last split request has been gone, so the public hearing is now closed. Thank, Thank you. you. So we'll move along into ordinances. First, it's an ordinance approving an agreement with Ace Pipe for 2023 wastewater collection system rehabilitation. We have a paper copy of an ordinance that is different than the one that was in the packet. The, the only change is that the words were not spelled out properly. The amount was in there numerically correctly. The words were not correct. Right. So the only thing that was adjusted was changing physically spelled out the amount of the comment. We call that a typo. Big typo. Yeah, big typo. I move we put this one into first reading by title only to open the discussion. Second. Also my LaDonna Allen, second by David Pyle, put this ordinance on first reading by title only. Will the clerk please read the title? In order to prove an agreement between the city of Carlton, Missouri and Ace Pipe Cleaning Incorporated to commence and complete the 2023 wastewater collection system rehabilitation Discussion. Well, I would like to know: Is this sludge remit? What is this? And it's three hundred thousand dollars. So I'm going to need. It is a not second. sludge removal. This is collection system only. This is our annual uh, INI or or once every 
two years, whatever we do, our I and I work where they clean, camera, and inspect the lines. Uh, this is also doing uh, some repairs that were identified in previous uh, inspections. Uh, manholes was the biggest thing on this one where they will reseal the manholes so that they don't leak again, uh, that type of thing. And it will also allow for some spot repairs if they are finding in their inspection, if they find some broken lines or that type of thing where they can do a uh, pinpoint, uh, you know, spot repair on something. Which part of the city are you doing this time? Uh, this one is focused over here on the northeast corner of town. And, and the I and I fund, if I remember right, has over four hundred thousand in it. Now, on this, since we had to change, where before it was a hundred and seventy or whatever, is that because that was the last one? Has it went up this much, or it just seems like this is a really big amount this time, Praise. Uh, it's been a couple of years since we have done one this big. Yes, you are right. Um, I have no idea why it. I did take the 2021 limits. Is that what it was? Put it into amount, so that is what we gave. So in two years' time, it's one of like a hundred. No, it, it's it's dependent on the amount of work. Yeah, it is. is what it is. We're yeah. getting more work done this time than what we did in 2021. Okay, without knowing what this actually was for, I didn't get the I and I balance today. Do you know what? I and I, do you have it on your computer? Um, is this the year four sledge removal though? No. This is not here. Right now, the I and I account has six hundred and thirty-eight thousand dollars. Sludge removal doesn't come out of I and I, does it? No, sludge removal doesn't. Yeah. Uh, but that's what I was wondering. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. we were going to hit that this year too, when I saw. You know, that might be since you brought that up. Sludge removal might be a problem. That company is in some pretty hot water in McDonald County. And I'm kind of waiting and seeing how it affects us. Wonderful. Yeah, I remember that coming up about a year ago. Yeah. Yes, Mike. Uh, the map here, and I'm assuming that the highlighted portion is the portion that we're talking about, which would include the line right there along the Center Creek Bank that uh, we're, uh, we were worried about uh, the bank erosion and getting into that line right there. It kind of looks like that's highlighted on this map anyway. And so anyway, I don't know if as they're going through that uh, in camera and inspecting and just make sure that uh, we're looking at that location specifically and making sure that we're still in Good shape there, I guess, with that specific. Uh, yeah, there's that's the majority of it. You can also see that there's a little bit over here in the uh, northwest corner. Not not near as much. But. Right. Anything else? Take a motion we put this ordinance on second reading by title only. Second. Motion by David Files, second word suspension, put this ordinance on second reading by title only. Real quick, please read the title. An ordinance approving an agreement between the City of Carl Junction, Missouri, and East Pack Painting Incorporated to commence and complete the 2023 wastewater collection system rehabilitation as directed by the City in accordance with the contract documents for a cost not to exceed $307,141.14 and authorizing the Mayor and or City Administrator to execute said agreement for and on behalf of the City of Carl Junction, Missouri. Any further discussion? Maybe we put this ordinance on final passage. Second. Motion by Don Allen, so by David Powell to put this ordinance on final passage. This will be a handbook to go to electronic voting, which seems to be working tonight. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. 
in the affirmative, please vote electronically. Eight in the affirmative, no abstentions or negatives. The ordinance passes. That is ordinance number 2342. 2342. What? 42. 42. Thank you. Next is an ordinance approving an agreement with retail strategies for consulting services. Motion by Dahl Allen, second by Holly Levine to put this ordinance on first reading by title only. Will the clerk please read the title? In order to approving an agreement between the City of Carl Junction, Missouri and Retail Strategies LLC, an Alabama limited liability company to provide professional consulting services related to retail recruitment for a term of three years for the sum of $140,000 as provided in the agreement, providing the terms and conditions thereof, and authorizing the mayor and or city administrator to execute said agreement for and on behalf of the City of Carl Junction, Missouri. Discussion? I think we had a big discussion about this last meeting. Would you like to say anything, Holly? Yes, yeah, so we uh, talked about this last meeting. So our goals here are really um, sales tax revenue, job creation, and expand services, and um, you know, retail to our citizens. Um, I think everybody sees all the businesses that are coming in Web and Joplin, and we really need somebody speaking on our, our behalf, trying to get some businesses in here. I feel if we do not start getting some businesses in town, that we are going to be left behind. Mike, uh, I know the last time of the discussion, we had mentioned that um, the contract is one year and then renewable in year uh, two and year three. Uh, the wording here, I'm just a little confused. The, the title basically says a three-year contract for the sum of 140000 In the wording there in, in, in the body, it says not to exceed 140000 Is this the full three years? Uh, this isn't a one-year-at-a-time contract. This is all three years at once. It, well... My understanding is that it's fifty thousand dollars the first year Correct. and forty-five each additional year. But we're doing all three if this passes. No the question. obligation, the contract reads for all three years, but at uh, the one-year mark, you can choose not to renew it for those last years. Um, it's once you make a payment, the fifty thousand dollars. Once you make that payment. You don't get any of that back, regardless of when you uh, discontinue the contract for you to be dissatisfied. But um, but you're not obligated to pay the forty-five thousand if you if you terminate the contract before you make the forty-five thousand dollar payment. And likewise with the last year, um, breaking it up into three years probably was the only protection the city could have if they were dissatisfied. Um, uh, with with what what you get in this contract, but um, uh, once you once you make the payment, then it's it's earned by the contractor. The wording that I think you're looking for, Mike, is that it's on page three of the contract. Cancellation policy there. Uh, letter A by the client at will. I have a few questions as well, and I've tried to narrow them down to be as, as concise as I can. But the first uh, relates to activity prior to this. The city comprehensive plan adopted in 2020 has an economic development section that spans pages 38 through 42 uh, with a couple of specific objectives related to economic development, one of them being consulting, uh, another one analysis of things that could be done to attract professionals and startups. Uh, and it also references uh, the MOCAN partnership and the benefit that that will bring the city in regard to economic development. And what I'm curious about is, has there been any effort toward accomplishing those objectives uh, that were stated in the comprehensive plan between its development and now? Uh, the major portion of that, or the major change in that is that MOCAM partnership, and yeah, that MOCAM partnership has been uh, dissolved. Uh, I noticed that there was still an online presence, but it didn't look like it was active. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, and, and the other objectives 
this would be, I guess, the first step. This would be the consulting to get to the analysis. Uh, the, the next item I'm, I'm curious about is, was there a selection process? Was there an RFQ put out uh, to see qualifications from various firms that, that specialize in the same uh, type of service uh, so that we could have some competitive uh, selection, basically, and, and who we would want to partner with? Yeah, so we spoke with a couple of different companies and um, I myself, I think Crystal, we felt this was the most inclusive one. Um, so a lot of companies do marketing for the city or provide data. This one does all of those things. Um, so they'll come in and map the town, you know, evaluate our property and all that, and then create a um, retail recruitment guide for us. Um, and then they will go out and recruit businesses, um, developers, things like that. And then we will also have that guide that we can steps on our own. Um, so, but there wasn't a formal process. No, there, um, I'm not sure what RFQ is. It, it's a request for call qualifications. There's a section in city code, uh, chapter 140, article two, that talks about uh, selection of professional services and, and a process that can be utilized or maybe should be utilized to uh, put out a request for qualifications and then consider multiple corporations or, or entities that might offer this service. Yeah, so we did talk to a few companies and we sent out um, emails to other cities that do use their services for reference checks. Two came back very positive, um, the other three did not reply. Did two of them come back positive? Is that what you're saying? Yes. What happened to the other ones? Do we ever follow up on them? Um, uh, I had one that came back as positive so far, but they were just finishing up their first year, I think is what it was, and then let us know, and then there was no response from three other cities. Is, is there an allocation in the budget specifically for this? At one time, we did have a well, like you say, 20 years ago, there was. And then just a few years ago, we had an allocation in the budget that we actually paid the chamber like half this amount every year. And we had to do away with that because it really wasn't justifying an economic development. And at that time, we did have it in. We have not budgeted for it this year. Um, like I said, it, I would recommend to the other members of the budget committee that when we are looking at funding this that we look at the proceeds from 1203 East 1208 whatever Metrito. Um because that was a, a sort of an economic development tool almost like an incubator that we got we got the business in we got the sales tax that is money that we did not have budgeted for as income but I think if we earmark that to go towards this, then it's actually going to be seed money for economic development. And it's something that could pay off a lot. So the, so the revenue from that sale wasn't it was accounted for in the budget. And no, I got no, it hasn't been. We didn't budget for the revenue because, you know, we weren't sure when the budget cycle started, if we get it sold. And like I say, I mean, we've talked about there's there's no guarantee in this contract what they're going to bring in. But if we don't do anything, we can guarantee nothing's going to change. <laughs> I mean, it's the, not going to happen. The, the last question that I that I have uh, relates to, I guess, accountability for lack of a, a better word, uh, or maybe it is the right word. Uh, from what I understood in reading through the agreement, uh, the consultant would be bound to just one market visit annually. So I take it to mean that they will only have a physical presence on the ground here one time a year. Um, it also references um, a point of contact for their, I believe it's their benchmark system, uh, which I assume to be an interface to allow communication or, or information sharing. Who would, who would the point of contact be? Um, so Crystal and I have been 
sharing that at this time. Um, he said anybody can be part of the base camp, so we can all base be members camp, of that and um, see what's going on and ask questions or give feedback. Um, I think Rick said he uses the base camp program and it's it's easy to use. He also said that uh, he will also um, as much information as we want and as many times he said he would give us weekly reports or monthly or year whatever we want so whatever we feel like we need they would be willing to do that virtually or yes yeah thank you <clears throat> any further discussion I move we put this ordinance on second reading by title only second motion by Donna Allen saying with Holly Levine put this Ordinance on second reading by title only. Will clerk please read the title? In order to approving an agreement between the City of Carl Junction, Missouri, and Retail Strategies LLC, an Alabama Limited Liability Company, to provide professional consulting services related to retail recruitment for a term of three years for the sum of $140,000, as provided in the agreement, providing the terms and conditions thereof, and authorizing the mayor and or city administrator to execute said agreement for and on behalf of the City of Carl Junction, Missouri. Any further discussion? But we put this ordinance on final passage. Second. Motion by the Don Allen, second Holly Levine, put this ordinance on final passage. This is a hand vote to go to electronic voting. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. In the affirmative, please vote electronically. We have six affirmative and we have two against. The ordinance passes. That's ordinance number 2343. Next is ordinance approving an agreement with DigiTicket for electronic ticketing. I would put this ordinance on first reading by title only. Motion by the Don Allen, so we'll have to put this ordinance on first reading by title only. Will the clerk please read the title? An ordinance approving an agreement between the City of Carl Junction, Missouri and Salsas Technologies LLC, an Oklahoma Limited Liability Company, to provide electronic ticketing services for the Carl Junction Police Department for a term of five years for the sum of $22,710 plus annual posting fees of $3,772 per year, providing the terms and conditions thereof and authorizing the mayor and or city administrator to execute said agreement for and on behalf of the city of Carl Junction, Missouri. Discussion? <coughs> you want to talk about it? Chief? Steve? I'm bored, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Anybody? I know we discussed this last couple of meetings. Well, then I move we put this ordinance on second reading by title only. Second. Motion by Don Allen. Second by David File to put this ordinance on second reading by title only. Will clerk please read the title? In ordinance approving an agreement between the City of Carl Junction, Missouri, and Saltus Technologies LLC, an Oklahoma Limited Liability Company, to provide electronic ticketing services for the Carl Junction Police Department. For a term of five years for the sum of $22,710 plus annual posting fees of $3,772 per year, providing the terms and conditions thereof, and authorizing the mayor and or city administrator to execute said agreement for and on behalf of the city of Carl Junction, Missouri. Any further discussion? I have one question. Yes, Mike. In here at uh, $9,000 for um, implementation and training services, as uh, turnover happens, do we have to? We have somebody yeah, that will be able to train. To train the trainer. They'll come in and train the supervisors who's actually going to be running it and then teaching the officers down the road. Okay. Anything else? We put this ordinance on final passage. Second. Motion by the Don Allen, second by David Bottle, put this ordinance on final passage. It's a hand vote to go to electronic voting. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Aiden the affirmative, please vote electronically. Aiden the affirmative, the ordinance passes, and that is ordinance number 2345. Thank you. Next, we have a long term projects report. Here are the questions for the city administrator on the long term projects. I did have one. Steve, on the, the foot golf, 
there's a mention of waiting on layout. Uh, my intent's not to put anybody on the spot, but who, who's responsible for that that needs to have that happen so we can move on? That's a good question. I don't know who's responsible. Do you have a volunteer that uh, member of the community that um, I don't know has experience with this or not has seen it and um, that individual has offered to, uh, to come up with a layout. So when they do, I suppose, uh, go off that as a start, probably, for lack of a better option. And I think uh, that'll probably happen pretty soon. Um, mm -hmm. On the dog park, what's the 4,200? That uh, is for all the fencing, the hardware, the gates, hydrants, the water trough, way stations for a 50 by 75 dog park. $4,000? That's it? You already own the land. That is, that's, yeah, that's basic. <laughs> when, I, when I saw that, I was like. That's materials. Basically, that's materials. That's all that is. You know, and, and since it's fence, and I talked to Jay, they can put it in, no problem. They would have put in the water line over too, which it doesn't. It doesn't show that cost in there. We got to run a water line from uh, by the concession stand across the parking lot over to where it's. All right, well, let's go. <laughs> well, I guess I did have one, one other. Uh, the permanent lighting at Veterans Memorial. I drove by today, paid particular attention. I assume those are solar lights. They are solar lights in place, and so the. Shorter daylight hours, they're having trouble keeping up through the night. Yeah, they've they've been a problem since we put them in. They haven't really worked to my satisfaction. Even in the long days of summer, it seemed like they would uh, not quite still be lit up at, at, at dawn. Then park repairs is there. Not really. I couldn't think of any place to. It wouldn't, I mean, like, doesn't qualify under like street lights or anything. It's no. just the monument. But yeah. as long as we waited to get that in, I really hate to see pulling those down. So we'll have to do I, think it, I think it is advisable now to, to go ahead and pull them down for the winter. Yeah. And if they're not going to be lit, and especially, especially that, you know, but that's probably a battery problem with the temperatures, too. Probably. There's if they're lithium batteries, those lithium batteries of that probably design they have did not function well in cold weather. Thank you. You was. Nobody wants to talk about number four. <laughs> um. Lakeside Park, being a playground. They're out there working on it. Do you want to roll that money from the oh. change orders over to <coughs> Lakeside? Yes. That would be my. That would be my suggestion. I'm one voice. Rick, you said yes. I said yes. I would say yes. Yes. No, it's. I'll Need a motion. Them, I'll have them draw it up and bring it before the council. Yeah. Council. If we said no to this, where would this money go? General <laughs> fund? Back, or back into fund. whichever fund we pull it from. Yeah. yeah. And if we, I mean, going to have to pull in more money because already we're going to be short to get the playground, where would that extra money come from? Well, I'm saying like, so what we're saying is like, we we'll lot this money, but is it really just semantics? Is it? At some point, we're this money's going to go back to general fund. At some point, we're going to, have to pull money out of general fund. I mean, if we if we don't if we take that thirty one thousand or whatever the total amount is, it will just remain in there, and then we would have to. If, if you remember, and then you would just have a hundred thousand dollar playground. Yeah, if you remember, there was about four or four or five four places that we were pulling the number the money from yeah. to get to that one number on it. So uh, it would just mean that there would be a reduction in those that we pulled from those funds. We wouldn't find additional money. 
if we that six hundred and sixty four thousand we saved that much in it. I mean when we did the math on the six hundred and sixty four thousand, that's why I said we knew what accounts between capital improvements and park improvements and the reserve sources. and now yeah. we're gonna I'm not sure at the end how much we're going to have to pull from sales tax, but that will go back into that from the reimbursement from the grant. So <coughs> at this point, the 31,000, we've already figured out how we're going to come up with that. So it's just, if we want to go ahead and pay that much and have that much extra in the play grant. If we save it, it will set in there and It'll just go into whatever else we need in whatever capital improvement or park improvement. Do we so, do we need a motion or just a consensus to to at least draw it out? Oh, he can like, draw something up, and then we'll, he'll come back and we'll see what we're going to get for thirty one thousand dollars. Other other than Mike, I pretty much got a shake their head yes. Well, and we'll, we'll still get to vote on it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We still have to vote on the change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But this is for all thirty-one thousand two hundred thirteen dollars. Yes. If uh, yeah, so will you be able to have that next meeting? So yep. So we can think about it between now and then. Decide. Both. And last week we just had our first meeting about the uh, playground design, so we're waiting on that to come back to us. The playground costs on Center Creek. Hopefully, the next one comes. <laughs> Is that? Are they looking at putting place there, or were you just looking at like the the uh, chips? Chip. The expensive part of the Center Creek one is those uh, climbing rocks, those climbing structures, those rock looking things, because there's cement. Those, that's the expensive part of the. Oh, I, I don't think that would be good because somebody falls and hits their face on it. That's not good. Or rocks. Wow. I guess, I mean, once they give us a, a plan or an idea, we can go back and. Yep. Yeah, we just uh, we've allocated that much money to, to the land. Yeah, I think so we, we allocated 135, 135 of the RPA money for it. Yeah. So we need to stick as close as we can. And they can tell us what they can do for that. Um, it showed that that was attached. Oh, it's way down in there, isn't it? Okay, never mind. I had to skip past the water service. Anything else on long term projects? Uh, do you want to talk about the pool so Mike knows? Or? Yeah, you can talk about it after you want to. That's fine. Uh, That's a long It's just draft. What yeah. you got yeah. is just draft on it. So uh, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of money. The range is eight hundred. And he's uh, more than welcome to have a copy of it if you want to to go through it. Mine. Now, yeah, I wanted, like I say, to discuss on this because it shows like to bring it back into for the next twenty years or whatever. 800 to a million and it talks about base and crack repairs and stuff and i'll be honest i did not make it through all 40 some whatever pages because i was reading but it talks about like basin crack repairs some different stuff um the decking like leveling and stuff but does it talk anywhere i was going through about like the plumbing i thought when the first people that is it in there i mean like because when the first people came out, it was my understanding they thought we had a leak under the pool and we were going to have to make like the cut the troughs or whatever to get to the plumbing. 
And they said with that amount of disruption, then they would have to consider it a new construction, a new pool, which would make us have to go with current pool codes. Uh, but that's, that's good questions for the consultant when he gets here. I, I can't answer. Is that. he gonna? But he's supposed to come in January, right? Yes, I'm waiting on an answer from. Him. Okay. Yeah, because that's what I was confused because they're talking about repairing and painting basin and everything. And I think I've replaced corroded piping. It's only twenty thousand dollars though yeah yeah showing some of the piping looks like uh, around like the lifeguard stands or I, it's, yeah. it shows pictures well and that's what i mean if this does the whole thing but i'd say the, the one people well i don't know if they know the leaks yeah i told them oh, okay yeah i was gonna say because the one acted like it was gonna be so extensive that i think it was it was going to be a new construction uh, Continental Pools, when they came in while they were building the splash pad, when they said that it was 900 to 1.1, I think is what they had said. So when you say they're coming in January, are they coming to a council meeting? Or? Yes. Yeah. Um, go on. Do you guys want to do a work session beforehand with him? Like from 6 to 6.45, something like that? Personally, I think that might be, I mean, be an open meeting. Yeah, Anybody it's could open attend. meeting, yeah. But that way we could, just as we thought of things, we could yeah. have, go back and forth. And, it wouldn't be and then you wouldn't have to be worried about whatever else is on the agenda, that type of thing. I think it's a good idea. Good. Anything else? If there's nothing else, we're going to move right along to department reports. Uh, let's go to public works. All right, sir. So we can ask him any questions you got. Got any water line breaks lately? Water. Water. Any questions? Oh, I had a question, Jason. Not here, but Steve, did you talk to Jay about um, the open position? Yes, and he realized that it was, <laughs> and he was going to keep looking. Um, might be a good idea if we could help him out, like say, list it somehow online, because a lot of times people in the age group that have young, healthy bodies to do a lot of that stuff, a lot of them just go online. And, I mean, and Facebook is like for old people like me anymore. So if yep. there's some places maybe we can go out because I know people that apply for like eight jobs a day online and stuff that they want to try to change careers. So, so where are we going to advertise? Where we? I know you don't want to do Facebook. Where else can we Well, do? Indeed. like Indeed and some of the. No, not Indeed. And the, oh, I can't think of the name of the other ones that. You can post your jobs, you know, like for free and stuff. A lot of real. I don't know about that one. Indeed, it's probably the biggest one. And then there's. Uh, yeah. I'll think of the other one. Is it LinkedIn? When is that? Because I actually had someone call me. I was looking for. It's available now. It's online. They can. No, it, it is not online right now. But it, the job's available. It's called. They, all they do is come in and get an application. There you go. I think we do have an application available on our website. Yes. Okay. What is the job position's name? The labor. Just labor.
Anything else for Public Works? If not, we'll go along to the PD. Any questions for Mark? Not a question, but a, a com comment. I want to compliment Chief McCall and the police department on shop with the cop. It was a great event, well organized, well run, uh, great cooperation, participation by the city and the school and uh, the different uh, service organizations. So good job. Thank you. Yeah. Do you know how, what the like statistics, how many kids, and how many people showed up? All that. Uh, ultimately, because every year we have like some that call in sick or whatever. We don't want them shopping that day. The actual day itself, we took 208 kids. When it was all said and done with the extra we had in, we helped 221 kids. Good job. That's good. It's always fun, too. Thank you. Is twenty six thousand five hundred dollars worth of gifts. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. Are there any um, gifts they can't have? Because I, <laughs> I was like walking around trying to find one of the kids' parents because the first thing. No, went it's to like video games that say with parent uh, parental guidance or something. We'll ask the parents if they want to let them. We know that we're not going to stop that kind of activity. We don't let them get guns or. And we did have a 14-year-old that wanted a BB gun. As long as the parents approve, they know that they can't shoot it inside the city. Uh, I'm not opposed to people owning guns, and I think you teach them responsibility at a young age. So that's that's fine by me. That was the kid I had. That's it was. I and I think that kid got a couple of lectures from people about how to use it. Yeah, uh, sure. I know. <laughs> Where was it appropriate? And we found out they can't buy gift cards. Thank you. Anything else for the chief? Very well, next is the building inspector's report. Any comments about that? She's still being busy. We're still, still busy. There. If not, there's also a deal on the municipal division summary reporting form in here for the court. Anybody wants to comment on that? If not, I'll go on to committee reports, budget and finance. Well, we spent three hundred and seven thousand dollars on I and I tonight. Um, we don't really have anything at this point, except at the end of this month, I am going to be getting all of the activity reports and go over them. Probably be mid-January before we have the first meeting so for budget planning so if everybody on the budget committee could come to the first meeting in January with like their calendars on what days or times are more convenient and that way we can maybe try to set our schedules for five weeks probably and that should give us plenty of time right we just have to pass it by the first meeting in in April. April. Okay. So if we start towards the last half of January, that'll give us time in case. We always start in January. Something always happens. Yeah. We always have like no COVID or something. COVID weather. So anyhow. Well, just, okay. it's just the weather then. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so anyhow, I would ask if everybody on the budget committee would kind of have your schedules in mind when we come back for the first meeting in January so we can set up. That's all I have. Any other questions for budget? We move right along to code nuisance, Rick. Uh, this time, sir. No questions for Rick. Human resources, Roger. One thing I got is we need a closed session next meeting. If Regarding Mr. personnel? <coughs> yes. <coughs> we won't meet it unless I get the eight um, well, we got one that he didn't get one. Oh, okay. you'll get it. Okay. Then we'll, we'll get it to you. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> You're not going to be out of the country, are you? No. Not planning on it. <laughs> All right, then. 
Anything else for human resources? Public facilities, Mike? I have nothing, sir. Anything for Mike? Economic development, Holly? Uh, yes, we passed the retail recruitment this evening. Um, they said that they could be here beginning of January to get a team in town to start mapping out the um, city. And they said they've got some conferences in January that they can start talking about us at. And then um, we're still looking at the zoning um, changes. Did Mr. Talley prepare this or Steve? I did. Okay. Did you see this? No. Okay. Awesome. Um, and then I know a lot of you saw those logos that I have made. Um, if anybody has any feedback on those or hasn't seen them, I kind of want to like, get something going with those. That's all for me. Any other questions for Holly? Very well, and we'll go to unfinished business. We'll go back to you, Holly, unfinished business. Um, yes, sir. Nothing. Bob? Rick? No, sir. I, think so. I have nothing. So, Donna? Uh, nothing right now. Mike? I have nothing. Bill? Nothing. David? No mayor. Chitali? No mayor. Lena? Just want to remind everybody on the council and everyone listening that the last day for election sign ups is December 26th at 5 p.m. And they're going to be closed. <laughs> Crystal? Yes, sir. Steve? Uh, one thing on uh, concerning HR for unfinished is uh, I completed an initial draft of the new employee handbook, uh, sent that to appropriate people. There are a couple of places in it that are going to require us to make some changes to our code. I will forward that um, the document to Mr. Talley tomorrow. I don't think I did already. Okay. Yeah. Is that it? Harvey? Hopefully, it'll bring us back in compliance with Merlin. What? No, sir. Mark? No. Nope. New business. David? No, sir. Bill? No, sir. Mike? Uh, who uh, organized the Christmas parade? Lions Club. Lions Club. Okay, well, uh, kudos to them. I think it was uh, uh, well attended and big a parade as I've seen in a while. And so uh, that's always nice. So just shout out to them. Appreciate them um, doing that. I they continue. That's all I have. Will you see the 4th of July parade next year? Oh. Election year. <laughs> <laughs> the Gang of Eight will be here. Yeah, that's right. So Donna. Uh, the only thing that I have, and of course it started on a social media thing, is is there a reason we didn't put the Christmas tree up this year at the lot by the fire department? Uh, there's no power. All the power outlets that are there are need to be repaired. Okay. Well, good. Then that gives us something because people were assuming it was some kind of anti holiday Christmas tree. So, power. Okay. Well, that, thank you because that way we could. Yeah. 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 And it was, I knew it was a simple, like, the star for the fire department tower got hit by lightning. They thought Joe pulled it down and he's like, no, it got hit by lightning. So, anyhow, thank you. That's a simple explanation that we can pass on to people. Anything else? No, just wanted to make sure. No, I have this. Thank you, Christmas Bill. spirit. Thank you. I will enjoy this greatly. That's all I have. Okay. Rick? Uh, just, there's kind of the flags up front. Some of them are kind of ripped up and faded. Yeah, when we put the, when we raise them back up, we'll put it right there. Are they supposed to be at? Because they didn't look like they're not at. They are. Yeah, oh, are they? I'm oh, sorry. I just glanced at the end of them. They were kind of ripped up. Anything else? Rick? Oh, no, sir. <laughs> Bob? Bob? No, sir. Bob. Uh, no, I just want to say I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas and we love Christmas around here. We're not pulling the lights out. Thank you. Mr. Talley. Elena? Crystal. Friday. Oh, yeah. And if you're around Christmas dinner here at City Hall. Potluck stuff? No. Oh. 
If I start walking on Thursday, I can get here time to eat. I tell them when and that we need to have one, and they take care of everything else. So. Somebody, somebody does. Somebody does. Yeah. Santa's helpers. <laughs> Santa. Yeah. Anything else? Crystal? No, sir. Steve? No, sir. Harvey? No, sir. Mark? No. Nope. Is there any other business for the cast? Thank like Mark. We adjourn. Second. Watch my right dispenser. Second, Joe Pilot. We adjourn. All is in favor. Please signify by raising your right hand. Take me affirmative. We're out of here. We are adjourned. Thank you all for attending. Mike.